Good morning, welcome to today's video. I'm here with Brown from Brown's Bikes and we're gonna film a video on how to clean your bike properly. We need a dirty bike. We've got one. Have we? Oh yeah. The Vietnam bike. I thought I'd bring it down. It's covered in shit. Authentic Vietnamese dirt. Um, and oil. Motor oil on the chain. Without bringing you like a downhill mountain bike, I don't think you could get anything dirtier, so. It does the job. It's got it's dirt good. inside it, it's got dirt it's in the bearings, everywhere. it's got dirt everywhere. <laughs> we'll do the transmission, take the wheels out, um, and yeah, try and make it look as new as possible. We are using a work stand. You don't need to use a work stand for this step. This is step number one, washing up liquid and water. Some people say don't use washing up liquid on a bike because of the paint and stuff like that. I've always done it. Yeah. I've never had any problems. Have you ever had any problems? To be honest, you'd have to wash your bike so many times to actually see any difference. It's basically that in the washing up liquid, there's tiny bits of salt as like a, an agitator. Um, but it, so obviously over time, you'll um, dull the paint on your bike. Um, where it's uh, abrasive. Alternative would be like a car shampoo um, to use because um, then it's not got any of the, uh, the gritty bits in to, to shift stuff, so another option. If you have disc brakes, uh, just don't clean it with the brush or, brush or cloth or sponge that you're using to clean the rest of the bike just because they might be oily residue and you don't want to put it on the on the rotor so just avoid the rotor you could just take them off if it's easier so you've got a brand new workshop space i do in here in here you're next door to the guys at strada Legend. legends <laughs> <laughs> so they're wheel building in there and yeah. we're just going to make a mess what have you done to this uh, i didn't do anything a vietnamese guy put motor oil on it Gritty. In order to clean your bike properly, you don't have to take the drivetrain off. No. This is special circumstances. Yeah, because it's so filthy, I'm going to put it in the uh, Sonic cleaner. Um, but the uh, you can just use like a you know those chain baths with the wheels in. Sort of, you just click it on and turn it around. Just gets the worst off of it. But to actually clean into the chain, because underneath each of these rollers um, needs to be ultimately clean as well. Um, I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. What other options do people have if they don't have one of those chain rolly cleaner things? Yeah. Is a bit of degreaser and a brush okay? Yeah, yeah just literally toothbrush or paintbrush. Cut an old um, bottle or something, just put it in the bottle cage and you can just literally dip it in. Obviously watch out for the disc, maybe take the wheel out and just, you know, brush it round and then uh, wash it off. And what kind of degreaser should you be using? I mean, there's bike specific ones, but I mean, I just use a generic degreaser from a car parts place is fine and um, there are different strengths so you got to watch out that it's not too strong because obviously you don't want to be sort of wrecking paint on the frames and things like that but uh you know just a, a mild degreaser is is fine yeah. and if it's not bike specific it's probably cheaper a lot cheaper <laughs> <laughs> How does this work? So ultrasonic vibrations basically, um, and it just literally just rattles the dirt off. Um, it's but it's, it's in a bath of liquid as well, yes. so it's like special fluid for that. Yeah, it sort of makes it move. Better than the standard parts washer? For me it's a bit smaller, um, it's a bit more handy, but um, there are one parts washers that use um, a fluid that basically eats the dirt, um, in effect, eats the grease. Yeah, this just works for me, that's why I've always used. And it's like showroom polish. Brilliant. It smells nice. Yeah. It's pretty good though. It even works on matte frames as well. So you can polish it in and then buff it off and it keeps the matte but cleans it as well. Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of them you end up with a... Uh, well, just doesn't clean them. Looks sort of rubbish still even though you've wiped off all the, uh, all the dirt. Although it's been... Uh, where the bags have been, I think it's taken a bit of the paint off. And it has, yeah. <laughs> so discs off. What are you cleaning. putting on there? Just a bit of grease on the um, on the uh... spline. Spline. That's the one. Just as um, when the rotor's on there, it's less option for creaking. Basically, you know, when the brakes are on, there could be a bit of movement between them and the hub. Ideally not. If there is, it's just and also stops them getting stuck on as well. And that is just normal grease. Just grease, yeah, but not too much because obviously you don't want it going everywhere, getting all over the rotors and in the caliper and everything. Just just lit enough on there, sort of work it in a bit between the grooves. So stuff's been in here for 20 minutes? Yeah, half an hour? No, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. It's uh, shiny, not too bad. Unfortunately, most of the viewers won't have one of these, but if you did have the means to take these off, you'd use a little tub, couldn't you? Put yeah. some degreaser in, yeah. brush. They do smaller versions of these as well, they, um, for the, the jewellery um, businesses, so like little tiny ultrasonic things. Some people use them for their chain and cassettes and things. It's like a deep fat fryer. Yeah, chips will be on later. It's like new. 
normal grease on there as well? Yeah, just to stop it uh, chewing into the, the body if you can help it. Disc rotors, how are we cleaning these? Uh, Isopro alcohol. Isopropanol. So, so that's an alternative to disc brake cleaner, which again yeah. is expensive. Yeah. You can just buy this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Should I clean it? <laughs> nah, that's all right. How much is this giant bottle? £10. Okay. I'm guessing a little goes a long way. Hence it's dirty because you've had it for so long. Just a bit of lube on each of the pivots. Just to keep it moving. So that's just your normal wet lube? Just a wet lube, yeah. I like it more than a spray one because a spray one just goes everywhere. Whereas this is, you can, it's got quite a narrow um, end on it so you can really, you know, be quite specific with where you're putting it. New tyres, finally say goodbye to this Ultra Sport. It's come a long way with me. Old Faithful. Old, it is Old Faithful. <laughs> I'll keep it and frame it. What are you doing? Fresh rim tape. <laughs> yeah, so fresh rim tape keeps the ceiling in all nice. So you've always got it and plus it doesn't doesn't ruin any of your um, spoke nipples as well. Oh, because it leaks through and can corrode the nipples if you yeah, want, it can. depending on the material. Um, yeah, and obviously depending on what brand you use, you want a better... You don't want that happening. Is to keep it nice and taut. Should you be changing it every time you reset up your tubulus, so sort of six months? It's best to keep an eye on it just to make sure that you're like with punches and stuff it doesn't go through and then um, split it. But it's always good to keep an eye on it and then replace it as you see as you see best. <laughs> so the Strada guys here have come up with their own ceiling. Looks like a, the um, Simpsons donut, doesn't it? That sort of. Oh, it does, doesn't it? So we're going to use around about 50 mil. More than you usually would? Yeah, just a little fraction more, just because the tyres are new um, and the tyres do tend to suck up a little bit of sealant on the inside of the tyre. Um, so this will probably save you two weeks down the line just adding some more to it. Is that done? No, no. It's it no. good as new. Darren? This is Darren. Strada Darren. He's one of your neighbours? Yes. What is this whole place? There's big, there's guys building wheels behind me. So welcome to Strada Handbuilt Wheels. Um, we're based in uh, Sussex near Arundel. We specialise in handbuilt wheels. So we have a wide range of options here from everyday riding wheels right the way up to high-end bespoke Envy custom builds. We also do our own Strada Performance Aero Range wheels. Um, and the, the kind of unique thing with these is that um, they aren't like a traditional hand-built wheel um, where you have multiple spokes and uh, box section rims. So this is our new Strada 55mm wheel. 55mm in depth, 28mm external, fully tubeless compatible and we're building these onto a wide range of hubs. Obviously this one has uh, the Chris King R45 centre lock um, in the new colourway. Um, but we also do these on DT Swiss, uh, 350, 240, Tune, Extra Light, and a number of other hub options as well. That's lots of words that I don't know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> this is our performance aero range here. The wheels are dedicated disc brake only. Why have you gone with only disc? Because it's the future? Not because it's the future. Um, we pulled away from doing our own disc brake wheels some time back. Um, the reason why we don't offer our own uh, labelled rim for uh, general customers to use is more because of safety. Um, we personally don't have the technology or we don't work with our partners, uh, companies to produce a rim that is safe enough to be used on a whole variety of different levels. So for alpine use, um, for daily riding. Um, so in, in short term, we can't match Envy. We can't match Zip. Um, we can't match the high-end rims like that. So therefore we've looked at producing an affordable aerodynamic package, which is much safer to use because you don't need to brake on it. Disc brake is, um, is generally the, the way forward, as most people will say these days. Um, and most sort of mid to high-end bikes now are becoming only available in that, uh, that system. But um, that's, that's what we've concentrated on for 2020. Yeah, it's crazy. It's the end of an era. So. Doing a runner, but got to be quite quick. Oh, train station's there. Basically, we ended up chatting for ages. And now this is a very rushed goodbye. But <laughs> goodbye. Thank you for today. Well, that turned into a fairly long journey home, although quite enjoyable because the last leg was on a lovely, freshly serviced bike. Big thanks to the guys from Strada Wheels for letting us come and visit. I hope you enjoyed that small insight into their very cool small business. And a huge thanks to Brown for helping me sort out my bike post-Vietnam. Even if he tricked me into 
cleaning it myself. So as some of you already know, he works as a pro team mechanic. Uh, he's also a mobile mechanic. He covers the whole area around Sussex and the south of London as well. Obviously we'll travel to events. So if you've got a team doing a race and you need a mechanic or you're hosting an event and you need a mechanic or you're an individual who just wants your bike tip top, check out the link down below to Brown's page. You should hire him because he's good, right? In two days time, me and Daisy are catching a flight. I'm not gonna tell you where yet, but we're gonna be taking our new bike. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.